What's up guys? It's me, Jeremy, at the Utopians bus again. Uh, I'm going to try to show you a little step-by-step -step of how I'm sealing up these windows. I've already pulled out the driver's side, did the passenger side yesterday. It's quite a bit tedious to do this the way I'm doing it, but I feel like it's the, the necessary way to uh, do this without having to experience too many water leaks in the future. I'm not going to go ahead and uh, take these apart to show you, but if you look outside here with me, you can see I've got some butyl flex uh, sealant there. You can see the, the red part, hopefully. Um, that's all primer. And um, the corners I filled in with a butyl sealant. And then I've got ordered a bunch of this uh, one inch by eighth of an inch by 50 foot rolls so I got 200 feet which is more than we need but we'll probably need more in the future to seal up hatches and things on the roof uh, ACs um, max air fans things like that so it's always good to have extra of these kind of things on hand um, so yeah I'm gonna uh, turn this camera around and show you exactly what I'm doing before I do it and then set a little time lapse so you can see that in uh, motion and hopefully it'll film uh, full length. So uh, enjoy. Uh, if you like these videos, please of course hit the thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions or uh, answers for us because it's always helpful to uh, have a peace of mind after doing this kind of stuff knowing that we did a good job. Um, We'll be sending an, an update video once we do a water leak test. There's a few of these uh, on the top of these internationals. They have this weather stripping in here, and I'll probably just put some uh, adhesive there or some butyl caulking behind it so it'll stick back in place. Uh, they're in pretty good shape. Like this one's kind of falling out the window. So I'll just put it back up there and seal that in. But uh, more importantly, uh, let me show you what I'm doing. So hopefully you can see this. Uh, these are the corners of these international buses. And I'm trying to shade this from the sun because we're on the sun facing side. So that adds for extra sweat today. But basically you'll see a little bit of spot rust happening in those areas. It's, it comes back pretty, pretty quick. But what I've done here is taken the liberty of uh, not only peeling off that um, old butyl that was there, or putty or whatever they used, but I've uh, ground this down with a wire wheel down to bare metal. You can see a little bit better one here. Um, I'll go ahead and hit that with a little abrasion, a little uh, scrubby, you know, just to knock that surface rust down again. But in these corners, we've got this uh, little flashing stuff and it's uh, sealed in there by one rivet. And then it's got this, you know, uh, it's like flashing, but it's not attached. It's it's loose in there and when I peeled up all this corner stuff you see that's a little dusty maybe you can see that so I'll go in there with a shop vac and, and dust that out but essentially these pieces are not secured in there as well as this uh, front lip so what I'll do after cleaning this up is apply a thick layer of uh, butyl sealant and that's what this stuff is uh, butyl flex rubber sealant. It's uh, for lap joints and exterior siding and stuff. It's great for gutters and flashing and it's uh, if you read that it says ideal for sealing metal joints which is what that is essentially. Uh, it's paintable, it's watertight and weatherproof. Durable and flexible. So it doesn't really, it will start to firm up like a caulking wood or a silicone but not all the way. So there will always be a little bit of flexible Thing there I'll show you this other window you can see down there it's uh, it stays flexible so it's great for uh, sealing up weatherized stuff uh, you can paint it which is what you see in that red area that's been primed so basically what I'll do uh, just to get to the point here is I'll, I'll pop a rivet in right about there or anywhere just to kind of suck up this piece of metal to make it stiff and firm in there and then you'll see you'll see my finger in there um, that hole is gonna collect water 
and originally they had a bunch of really hard caulking in here but I peeled it out with a flathead screwdriver uh, to the best of my ability there's still some gunk in there uh, to expose that big hole because chances are here's another one you can see that I didn't do that and you can see where it's sort of cracking there and uh, of course you know this metal that's underneath that also poses a problem there's there's like holes and gaps in there so it starts to rot um, this little seam here will also collect water so you want to basically fill all those little uh, relief areas with some butyl flex or uh, any type of caulking but I'm choosing the, the butyl because it's flexible and uh, it's heat resistant up to thousands of degrees so it's a really great stuff to seal this with uh, I go real heavy in these corners here and then I'll you know clean up all this dusted area and stuff of course first so it has something to adhere to I've gone ahead and uh, polished these down with the wire wheels as same as the front of this little lip here that uh, used to be wall panels I even get the little corner here so I've got a nice uh, surface, nice flat surface to adhere the window frames to. Now speaking of window frames, these are windows over here. I've gone ahead and uh, wire wheeled all of this down. Now these are made of aluminum so they won't rust. Uh, the only thing you really have to worry about rusting is those window frames essentially. So because these are aluminum I just cleaned them out, got as much of that gunk out of there as possible including the faces that are the parts that make contact. You can see here, you still see a little bit of residue left from the old butyl that was there, or caulking or whatever they used. And I just knocked that down to a nice shiny finish. Uh, you want to always inspect your windows, make sure there's no gunk on them like that. But do the best you can to clean this up. And then you've got a nice, these lips, these undersides, everything that makes the contact with the window frame should be clean. Uh, so I've prepared all those windows, took them out one at a time, and went above and beyond uh, to get all this stuff out of the corners. Scraped all the, the old uh, caulking that was here uh, to prepare an area for the brand new butyl tape that I've got there. Um, so then after I fill these corners in, I'll go ahead and let that set up just a little bit. It, it can still be wet when you paint it because it never really dries fully. It just kind of seals up those areas. And places like this, I'll drill a hole through here. You'll still see a little gap down there, hopefully. But I'll drill a hole right through this little flashing right into the rib here and slap a little rivet in there. Same thing here on these, on these corners. I'll put a rivet through there, even if it's not loose to my eyes. I'll put a little tiny, you know, eighth inch rivet in there to hold it in place because all of these things are a little sketchy. And if that's sagging and I've got just some butyl flex in there, it's not really going to uh, keep the water from puddling and finding its way into your walls. So after that's done, I'll prime this whole surface area to keep it from rusting further all the way around. I'll prime this inside lip of this where it makes contact right here with the edge of the window. And then I'll go in and I'll lay down on top of my caulking, on top of the primer and everything once that dries a little bit. And on top of these riveted joints here, I'll lay a, a nice layer of uh, butyl tape down. I, I pre-measure them and cut them out in strips ahead of time so I'm not sitting there struggling with a roll. And then after that, I'll put a bead of caulking right up the edge of this thing where it makes contact with the window. And for the most part, it does a good job. Uh, this is probably a bad example, but you'll see a little bit leaking out there. And then what I'll do is I'll come outside the bus later and just because it's pliable and still flexible, I'll just do like a normal painting operation there and sort of seal up those gaps and add any more that I need. I'll check the bottom areas where it's all sealed in there together. This is basically the butyl that's been painted here. And then there's, you know, the butyl tape that you see there, sort of. I guess you see that, yeah. So that tape you can also push into place where you see gaps forming and stuff like that. And uh, even up in the corner here, you see a little bit of butyl uh, sort of poking through there. 
I'll go ahead and apply an extra little bead along the whole window and make sure it's sealed all the way around. And then the only real part that you have to worry about is where the windows slide up and down, that gap there. But everything else should uh, form a nice tight seal for water leaks. And um, yeah, so uh, hopefully that's a good explanation. You know, put a nice seal along here. Fill this area in after riveting it tight. Uh, prime the whole thing so it doesn't rust anymore with a good, uh, show you my can of primer here. Uh, you know, for a dollar more, you get the good stuff, the professional stuff, and it's fast drying. Uh, it goes a lot further, so, so they say. Add twice the protection of bare metal, previously painted, or sound rusted surfaces. So as long as your area is prepped like I have done, uh, this stuff, you know, covers it real nicely. It actually looks kind of cool too if you look over here. And, and you can go above and beyond and spray that whole area underneath your window to uh, give it a nice sound surface to put your butyl tape down and to be able to see this edge so you can put a nice layer. There's these little top corners over here that I go a little heavy on also because that's where the water is going to leak in there. You know, those little gaps that you don't necessarily see, you've got to look for them. you got to look for all those little holes. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that's a good explanation. Sorry for dragging on this uh, explanation for so long, but I really wanted to get in here and show you what I'm doing uh, versus what some other people are doing and, and struggling uh, with leaky windows down the road. Um, the same thing goes on the roof when we get to that point. I'm going to go up there, you know, and pressure clean around the rivets and the, and the joints in there and, and make sure it's all uh, tight, you know, because these rivets start to rust through, you know, and you'll get little water will find its way. Sometimes it'll go upwards and stuff. Uh, if you've ever done any roofing, you, you know that it's, it's not always predictable what happens. So, yeah, uh, set a uh, time lapse here, try to angle it so you can see the work that I'm doing. And um, thanks for following along. Uh, of course, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And uh, until the next update, thanks for watching. This is Jeremy signing off for the Utopians. Enjoy the time lapse. Peace.
come off. I found that like a Brillo pad with the stuff in it uh, helps to scrub all this away once you get home. But I'm not really concerned about this too much, you know, as long as it adheres and it goes in there appropriately. I'm not real worried about what it looks like right now because we're going to paint the whole outside of this bus. But essentially, uh, you get the idea. Oops. I was just going to say, try to keep it off the windows, but uh, it'll scrape loose with the razor blade. And like I said, it doesn't dry all the way hard like most caulking and silicone does. But uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to leave this for now and come back tomorrow and uh, go ahead, you know, with a little scraper and, you know, maybe an extra bead of this stuff. I might need to pick up another tube or two to go along that seam. Even though, if you look under there, I mean, you can't really see that. But there's that one inch butyl tape that's nice and uh, planted in there. Like here, it's sort of overlapping and there's plenty of excess. So what I may do in that case where there isn't, you know, this lip, which is, it doesn't look like, it looks like these are the only windows that have that and maybe there's emergency exit. So the back windows have this little lip, I guess, for extra support or something. But I'll go through here and, you know, slice that extra away or maybe just keep it there and, you know, cinch it down like that and make sure that it, there's no cracks or anything showing. It's better to do this forming stuff when it is hot, which is no problem here. But essentially, uh, yeah, I think that'll do the trick as far as waterproofing these windows go. Now there are some areas along this rub rail that are a little rusted on top. Uh, that's mostly primer, what you see there. But um, I'll go back through, you know, and if I see any little cracks like this, uh, even up here on top of this lip, if any of this sealant has gone bad, I'll go ahead and reseal that. Uh, all these little joints, every little rivet that I see that's missing or that has a space in it, I will go ahead and uh, seal that up. So by the time I'm done with all that, and all this uh, extra work. Hopefully I can put a water hose on this, spray it down and not find any leaks. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. I'm sorry that it was out of focus. I realized that after watching the preview. Um, it's just is what it is when you're dealing with a cell phone technology. So hopefully you're enjoying these videos. I've got quite a big mess in here. Um, our welder showed up yesterday and looked at this and uh, said he would go home and give me a ballpark figure. Um, we're creating off for some work. So as soon as he gets that done, I'll uh, try to film that and show you what we're doing to patch this floor up in a very sturdy way, structural way. And I'll also uh, throw his name out there, you know, for anybody in Florida who needs a good welder or would be willing to pay to have him come out and help out. So yeah. Um, both sides of the windows are done. That's nice because now I can eat my little uh, bag lunch. I got some ice for the water cooler. I made myself a sandwich this morning. And uh, it's probably around lunchtime, maybe a little bit after that. But uh, today definitely went smoother than yesterday. Yesterday was my learning curve. Today I've applied that learning to this side and haven't made as many mistakes. And I'm hoping that uh, it's going to work well. So thanks for joining once again. Um, Utopians Bus. Jeremy signing off. Till next time. Peace.